Hey everybody, this is Tony Mandiel at Anatomy FX, and this is the next part of our mummy mask. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be painting the mask without the use of an airbrush. If you wanna paint a latex rubber mask and you don't have access to an airbrush, it is possible. What we're gonna be doing here is starting with some Prosade No-Tac Adhesive. The difference between the No-Tac and the regular Prosade is exactly what it says. It's gonna to adhere to the latex rubber, but when it dries, it's not gonna remain tacky and we're mixing in some Liquitex heavy bodied acrylic paint with that. We're using the heavy body in the tube to start because it's, it's more opaque, it's, it's thicker, and it's gonna give us a better all over coverage as a base coat on the mask. And uh, generally you mix about 50-50, uh, half Prosade and half Liquitex acrylic paint. And we're gonna go ahead and start brushing that onto our mask with a chip brush. Pretty aggressively, we wanna work it in all of the creases, all of the wrinkles, and we wanna make sure that we have overall good coverage. And the great part with this too is that after it dries, we can go ahead and add another layer on top of it to make it even darker and make sure none of that uh, natural latex color is showing through. We wanna start with a really dark base because what we're gonna be doing is dry brushing a lighter color on top of this to, to give our mummy that that sort of a uh, really uh, sort of tissue paper look to him. Uh, the beautiful part about uh, using a mummy for this particular uh, exercise is there's not a lot of translucency to it. Uh, the, the skin, what's left of it is, is pretty opaque. There's not a lot of depth and a lot of color underneath it. So at this point, we're force drying our, our base coat of, of Pax Paint and uh, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that that's nice and dark and dry before we go to our next step. And we're gonna mix a little bit more Prosade no tack. And here I'm switching over to the golden acrylics. Uh, the goldens are, are good for this next step because they're not as thick and heavy bodied as a Liquitex. They're, they're more of a, a liquidy acrylic paint and there's a little bit more translucency to them. And I'm using a, a buff titanium white there. It's sort of an off white. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix just a single drop of black into there too. So it's a little bit of a, a gray tone. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that up. And what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a, a fresh chip brush, a fresh one inch brush, and we're gonna be dry brushing it. What that means is we're gonna be getting just a little bit of paint on the brush, and then we wanna work most of it off. You can see I'm sort of trying to work the paint off of it. We want a minimal amount of paint on the brush for this next step. And we're gonna go ahead and just start gently using a, the side of the brush, just start stroking it along the, uh, the surface of the mask. And what we want is we want that sort of grayish paint to just pick up all of the highlights. We want that really dark burnt umber to remain in the creases and all the deep wrinkles. And we just want that, that sort of grayish buff color just on all of the high points. So we're gonna, we can do this in layers too. And, if you have to go back and, and load your paint up, load your brush up with a little more paint, you want to make sure that most of it is wiped off. Again, just a minimal amount of paint for this exercise. And you can see here, we've been dry brushing over the entire surface of it and occasionally going back and, and getting a little more paint. But you can see that that grayish buff color is just picked up on all of the high points of the sculpture really, really nicely. But that dark burnt umber color is still down in, in all of the creases and all the recesses. So it gives us a nice, uh, a nice mummy look, a nice sort of uh, a weathered, desiccated sort of tissue paper type look to the flesh. Now using that same color, that uh, same color that I mixed up for the dry brush, we're gonna go ahead and paint in some of these uh, areas at the top of the head that I sculpted that look like they could be some exposed bone. Maybe some of the flesh is as sort of ripped and torn and, and shrunk away and just given us a little bit of exposed bone. So there's a couple of areas right near the top of the head. So we wanna go ahead and just brush those in and uh, make them really stand out. 
And then a little bit later on, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna age that too, so it's not such a stark contrast. And we're gonna use that same color and start hand painting the teeth as well. Um, just be very cautious here. We wanna make sure we're just staying right on the surface of the tooth. And we don't even have to go in between the teeth because that dark color, that dark burnt umber color that we started with is already there. So it gives us a nice, uh, nice dark uh, gap in between the teeth already. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and begin painting that color in. And then again, we can force dry that with a hair dryer or just let it dry naturally. And we can go ahead and add a second layer to make it even brighter. Uh, you can see here that some of the dark color is still showing through. So we're gonna dry that and then go ahead and add a second layer just to the, uh, just to the edges, just to the surface of the teeth. We can leave it a little bit darker up towards the root and go ahead and just add a second coat and sort of blend it down. Now to, uh, to get some more detail in those, those deep creases and those deep wrinkles, we can switch over to alcohol makeup palettes. Uh, here we have a Skin Illustrator palette and an Endura palette, uh, European Body Arts, and they're both the same type of makeup. They're an alcohol activated makeup, they're a dry palette. So I'm just going right for the black here. I'm spritzing some 99% isopropyl alcohol in there. And we're gonna load up a thin brush with some of that color. We're gonna mix it up and we want mostly alcohol. We want it really runny here with just a, a small amount of color. And the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that color and we're gonna start working it into the creases and the wrinkles. Uh, not everywhere, just where you want your deepest, darkest color. And as long as that, that color is, is really loaded up with alcohol, it's gonna make a nice wash and it's just gonna find those, those crevices, those wrinkles on its own. You just really have to dab it in and that alcohol and that little bit of color is gonna seek those, uh, those deep areas. And once the alcohol evaporates, it's just gonna leave a little bit of color. So we can go ahead and do that anywhere we want a little bit more uh, contrast and a little bit more of a, a deeper color. Um, so we can generally do that around the eyes and, and some of the, the wrinkles in the forehead, some of those eye creases and in the eye sockets. And you can see here that uh, building up those layers of color and uh, it just gives a nice, uh, a nice contrast. Now you can see we've got some of that black in the eye sockets and in some of the creases in the forehead and around the mouth. And I'm just taking some here and I'm sort of dabbing it in the nostrils and sort of stippling it out and blending it with my finger just to create a, a deep cavity in the nostril. And again, we wanna make sure those corners of the mouth are nice and dark too. So we haven't used the black everywhere. We haven't used it in every crease, every wrinkle, just some of the, some of the deepest areas where we want a little bit more contrast. Now we're gonna go ahead and start um, adding some, some different uh, color variations to the teeth as well. So I'm switching over in this point to a, a Skin Illustrator palette and I'm, I'm just picking a, a brownish color uh, and I'm adding a little bit of 99% alcohol to it here. And uh, I believe that color is called Din. And we're gonna load that brush up and we're gonna go ahead and start uh, adding some, some stain to the teeth. We mostly wanna stay around the root of the tooth and, and work our way down. So there's a, some color variation. So it's darker up towards the root. And then we're just blending that color out towards the edge of the tooth. And we can do this in layers as well. Uh, we can start with a, a lighter brown color and then we can work to a darker brown color here. So it's, it's really dark and sort of uh, decayed up towards the root. And uh, we get a little bit more of a, a a natural tooth color down towards the edge of the tooth.
You can see here we've continued working that brown from the root uh, down towards the edge of the tooth, so it's got a nice decayed look. And now we're just taking some really dark brown color and going in and filling in between the gaps of the teeth, anywhere where there might still be a little bit of a, a lighter color showing through, some of that light natural latex color. We just want to make sure it's nice and dark in there, and the whole thing looks really rotted and decayed. We're going to continue that same technique on the exposed bone up towards the top of the head. Uh, we want to make sure that that's blended in a little bit more, so we're using some of the, the brown colors there. And we're going to go ahead and keep, you notice I keep wiping some color off the brush. I want to add a little bit of color in the beginning, and then I want to be able to blend it out. I don't want the brush loaded up with so much color that all of that, that bone white just gets completely covered up. We just want a, a little bit of a... a a color transition around the edges, like there's some some rot and some staining going on underneath that flesh, but then there's that little bit of bone white still showing through. So it just blends it all out more and makes it look a little more natural. Now we want to seal all of this in, and what we can do is use this Liquitex satin varnish. Uh, this Liquitex varnish comes in a matte a satin and a high gloss, and I just happen to not have the matte or I would have used that. So uh, rather than spraying this on with an airbrush like we normally would, again, we can take the a one inch, a clean one inch chip brush and just sort of stipple over the entire thing. And that's gonna seal in all of those, uh, those layers of paint and that alcohol makeup too. So that alcohol makeup is never gonna rub off uh, this Liquitex varnish is just gonna seal all that in and, and make the whole thing bulletproof and it remains flexible. Now that we've sealed the whole thing with the Liquitex satin varnish and we've dried it with a hairdryer, we're moving on to the Monster Makers Permawet. I really like this for doing um, a wet look on eyeballs and teeth. So we want the teeth to have a little bit of a, an enamel sheen to it, more so than the rest of the face does. So we're just gonna go ahead and hand paint some of this Monster Makers Permawet. And again, this is a flexible sealer. Uh, it's high gloss. And you can build up layers on this as well, as long as the, the underneath layer is dry. So we'll, we'll paint a layer on, and then we'll force dry it with the hairdryer, and then we'll paint another layer on, so the teeth have a nice enamel sheen to them. So it just gives a little bit of a, a, a sheen variance between the rest of the face. And that's pretty much it at this point. This is a, a simple paint job that we've done with just some washes and some dry brushes and no airbrushes needed. So if you want to paint a latex mask, you can do it without needing expensive airbrush equipment. Uh, you just, as long as you have the right adhesive based paints, you've got that, that Prosade Notac and those acrylic paints and a little bit of uh, ingenuity, you can definitely paint a mask without needing an airbrush. And uh, here's the finished piece. And the next step will be to add some, some gauze bandages to this and uh, distress it a little bit more and then it'll be ready for wear. You can see even with that Liquitex gloss on there, uh, there's no cracking. All the color stays put really nicely. It's nice and flexible and it's a, a nice professionally painted piece. So thanks for watching guys.